This video is part of a series on how to draft pants patterns. The textbook for this class is Pattern Making for Fashion Design by Helen Joseph Armstrong. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to begin to draft the foundation number two for the trouser silhouette. This is the finished trouser pattern uh, with the grain line and the drafting lines remaining here. But before we get to this place, we will draft the trousers, keying off of some uh, key center lines and drafting off of those lines at certain measurements or distances and uh, adding in proportions, curves, to arrive at our trouser draft. To know how to draft the trousers, we'll start with the measurements that we took in class and we had that entire discussion in class so I won't go into that now. We'll use these measurements. To begin, we want to have a large piece of paper a uh, few inches longer than your outseam measurement from waist to floor. Uh, you want to find the middle of it. The easiest way to do that is fold it in half, crease it, crease it, and draw a line down that crease the length from your waistline to the floor. I'm going to start drafting with marker so that you can, I hope, see the marks a little more clearly. I'm going to cross mark at the ankle, cross mark at the waist. And that's my waist to ankle measurement. I'm going to bring the page from the text. This is page 552 from uh, our text. And it's very smart to label as you go along. That way you don't get lost. The next point to plot on this line is the crotch depth. And the instructions tell us we need to find the crotch depth plus three quarters of an inch of ease. From taking measurements for this client, the crotch depth is nine, and then plus the three quarters inch of ease, so this is the crotch depth. We're going to label that D according to the page 552. Next we plot the hip depth, which is one third of this measurement. So from A to D is nine and three quarters. One third of that would be three and one quarter, and it's up from the crotch depth. So this is point C, which is the hip. The next point on this line to plot is the knee length, and the instructions tell us that that is one half of B to D plus one inch. So that is, and the one inch is toward the waist. So that is here. This is E, this is the knee. Next, the instructions say square out from both sides of these points, this line. So this is where the Taylor square comes in handy. And how you square out is you run one edge of the square along the line that you're squaring out from, and you run a line that is square out on all these points. How far do you go? Oh, out there somewhere. If you all need to extend these points at any uh, time in the instructions, you just draw a longer line. As you're squaring out, if you come to the end of uh, your line and there's nothing more to place your Taylor square against, simply flip it over and continue squaring out. And the same for the other side. As you flip the square to the square out on this side, if you find that the thickness of the square is covering up the line, you can't see it, simply 
move it over so that you can see the line next to the square on this side and continue to square out. So here we have the center line from waist to floor. We have squared out at the floor, the knee, the crotch depth, the hip, and the waist. We have labeled all of those with the points and named them so that we can leave a breadcrumb trail for ourselves as we continue to plot this pattern. Be sure to label the front and the back as we proceed. Now, moving on to page 553, we're going to be drafting and applying measurements from the center line this way for the back, for the back hip width, and then this way for the front hip width. So, working on the back first, we want to apply half of the back hip. The text says plus a quarter of an inch of ease. For new beginners, uh, as we are in this class, I like to add three quarters of an inch of ease. We can always pinch it out in the fitting. So, we're going to add half of the back hip plus three quarters inch of ease. So the back hip for this client is 10. So here's 10 plus three quarters inch of ease. And so here is point F and we just plotted from C to F on the back. From D to the new point G is the same, the same 10 and 3 quarters. This is point G. And from point A to H is the same. So we are plotting these points as we draft the pattern H. Then they want us to connect G with H. On that G to H line, we need to plot X, and that is one half of that line, X. From G to the new point I is one half of G to D. One half of G to D is five and three eighths, and we apply that amount here to find our new point of I. So you can see it's very mathematical, it's proportional, there's math, and you base some measurements on measurements you've previously used, finding a proportion of them. So we'll proceed. So here I've drafted uh, the front, and you'll notice that this extension is shorter than this extension. That is because it is the crotch extension in the front and the crotch extension in the back that sets up the leg style and the fit of the trousers. Uh, in the back, because generally speaking, the back of the torso, the back of the buttocks, is a larger area to cover than in the front. The extension here, because it has a larger area to cover, is longer. You'll see this is about half the proportion of this line, whereas the front extension is less. Continuing on page 553, now we're going to start applying some measurements to this waistline to start shaping the top of this draft to fit the curve of the torso from the hip curving up to the waist. So let's proceed with that. From H to the point N is three quarters of an inch. So I'm going to measure in three quarters of an inch and label that N. From N, this way to the point O is half of the back waist measurement, which for this client is 17 and a half, uh, plus some um, ease, plus two and a quarter inches. Now, 
this might take us past point A, in which case I'm going to stop at point A and not transgress into the front waist. Uh, I happen to know this client does not have a significant difference between the waist and the hip. Some people curve in quite a bit at the waist, and so we'll take in quite a bit. Uh, others are more um, straight shaped from hip to waist, and so we'll be uh, not taking in, taking as much. So the back waist is on the half, eight and three quarters, plus it says two and a quarter inches. So yes, I'm going to stop here and not transgress into the front uh, draft. I'm going to have point O be right there at A. There are steps later in the, in the process where we can uh, refine what this is. Next, we're going to mark along this back waistline placement for uh, darts. To mark the placement for the first dart, the draft says from this point N next to P is 3 inches, so we'll mark that. From P, we mark a 1 inch dart intake or underlay uh, with a space of an inch and a quarter between them. So let's mark that. So I'm putting a bracket here. This will be, these spaces are our 1 inch darts. At the center of these dart placements, we're going to mark a line uh, four and a quarter, no, it's four and a half inches down, and that is the length of the back dart. Continuing on to page 554, we next want to uh, draft this back seat curve from the waist through the hip line to the seat and then curve into this crotch extension. And we need to do a few uh, steps to do that. So following the text on page 554, it says N, which we have here by my finger, N to S is a quarter of an inch squared up. So squared up, quarter of an inch is S, point S. Then it says draw a line from S to X to the crotch line, S through X to the crotch line. So we set up a diagonal line here. Next in the text it says from G, which is this point, to T, which is hanging out here somewhere, is a two inch diagonal line. Now. We need to, at this point, look at the draft on the page and see if that line from G to T springs or jumps, springs away from G at an equidistance from the lines here. And I believe it does. So here is two inches on this see-through ruler and I'm wanting to position that so that this space and this space is equidistance so that we get the correct angle here. And I'm going to do that in pencil and then measure up and down and make sure that yes indeed I'm in the ballpark and yes that's lovely that's exactly the angle we want this line to spring from G to labeling this T. Great. Uh, then it says draw a crotch curve from I, which is here, to X, which is here, touching or blending at T. So here again we want to look in the picture. Does the curve spring immediately from I, which is this, where on the line from I to G does that curve begin to spring from? I believe, I, I can see that it springs from about a third of the way down that line, so I'm going to start that. Similarly, up here at X, where on the line from S to X down to this line 
where on this diagonal line does that curve spring from? And here again, I think it springs partially down that line, approximately uh, slightly above the hip line. So you can see we can map. We can have a good, uh, good go at mapping this line. And of course, you would be smart to do this work in pencil with an eraser. Uh, but that looks like a pretty good even curve to me. So we'll go with this. So there is the back waist here at an angle down through the back seat at the hip line, curving under the butt. And this is the crotch extension. So this is the part of the pant that will go in and this will become the inseam. We'll do that same function on the front. So continuing on page 554, next we're going to use a curve to draw in from S to O along the top of the waist here, like that. We'll be doing the same curve from the front, quarter of an inch below at L, and drawing a curve up to Q. Next, we want to draw in the dart legs. We've allowed the dart underlay, for example, back here or on the back, we're going to take a one inch dart and we've drawn a center line four and a half inches long. We need to make a decision about what style of dart leg we are going to draw. Because human beings are not angular, uh, you have a choice in deciding to draw straight dart, straight dart legs rather, that look like that. Or if you have a client who is quite curvy and their hips spring uh, uh, with much curve from the waist, what you could do is use a curve to shape that dart in a more pleasing fashion. In this way, often it's wise because sometimes you get a bubble or a dimple at the end of your dart if you don't stitch it correctly, but if you are tapering in a smooth, graceful curve on each side, then you don't get that bubble at the end of the dart. Uh, I prefer a slightly curved dart. I think it has more grace and elegance in your garment. Once you have your dart legs uh, marked in here, then they want you to add the hip curve from the hip line up to the waist. Now remember here where my client uh, measures a little more broadly across the back and so my measurement wanted to go transgress into the front. Um, this might be a time where you divide that difference and balance the curve off of the side. This might be a place where you diminish these darts a little so that uh, you give your client a little more breadth across the back. This is where you would add those variations in for your client. Next, on page 555 of the textbook, we want to find a proportion, a measurement on the crotch depth line and find the grain line, the crease line that runs up and down. So to do that on the back, we go from, uh, we want to find from point D to point V, which is one half of this line plus a quarter of an inch. And I plotted that, here it is, and then it says square up and down from that line, from that point to create a line. Then we'll do the same thing on the front to add the crease line there. So here we've added the crease line in the back, the crease line in the front. Using that as a center line of the trouser leg, we want to mark the hem widths. Um, according to the text on 555. And you can see in the diagram that on the back it's four and a half inches on either side of this center crease line. So I'm going to do that. Four and a half inches on the back, 
four inches on the front. That's because we need a little less fabric to go around the front than we do around the back. Then it says draw the inseams. An easy way to get a long straight line is to use a push pin uh, at one point down at the bottom, a push pin at the top, and slide your long ruler against them to create that long straight line. Super easy and uh, then your ruler doesn't slide. You can use the same trick to mark in the out seam here along the out seam or side seam. The text has you um, angling up to the hip. I like to stop here at the crotch depth. It just gives us a little more ease in that mock-up fitting. We can always pinch it out in the mock-up if we have a little bit too much ease right here. And then you'll do that on the front. So here we have the long out seam marked in, the inseam marked in, and the final marking that we'll do in this video is adding just a little bit of curve here at the inner thigh at the top of the inseam. And it says mark a half an inch in and draw straight lines curving a little bit here. And that's what we'll do. So this video introduced you to the concepts of drafting patterns using full body measurements, dividing them by half because we're making half the uh, a full pattern that will translate into the full garment. Applying those measurements in proportions or as direct measurements. We learned how to line up and square out and we learned how to plot from point to point to find the new point. This video will get you started and we will complete the work in class following the remaining pages in the textbook Pattern Making for Fashion Design by Helen Joseph Armstrong.